Hey team, this is Dr. Michael McCarthy, and today we're going to talk about the random forest model. In Alteryx, they just call it the forest model. So I'm going to come to the predictive tab and slide over to the forest model, and then I'm just going to click on it once. And here I have a nice outline of what entails the forest model. And remember, I can always right click and look in the help function. And here I can see how to configure the tool. So I'm going to drag and drop the forest model onto the canvas. I'm going to attach it to the clean data that I built in the previous models. So here's my decision tree, here's my support vector machine, and here's my forest model. And of course, I will right click and I'll add all browses. After that is complete, I will save it, which is always a good practice, and then I will run it. And as you can see, I failed to configure my forest model. So I will click on it and I will add a name. It's very important to have a name. If we don't use a name, it, this actually will fail. And I need to select a target variable. It defaults to one, but I actually wanted to go to class and I will select all the other variables to go in as independent variables. Remember in Alteryx, they call them predictive variables and target variable for the dependent variable. And then I'll run it again. Great. So here I have, I don't know if you saw during the, the process, I had green boxes around each tool and browse that ran correctly. So what I wanna take a look at is of course the first browse to make sure everything went according to plan. So what I'll do is I'll make the report configuration just a little bit bigger you can see that the data quality was good. This is the different portions of the input. And then I'll look at the report. And we can see how the model was able to classify the three different types of irises. You can see there's perfect classification for the iris setosa and 47 out of 50 for the iris varicicolor and 47 for the iris virginica. So that's pretty good. We have an error rate of about 4%. And then what we can do is we can contrast that with the support vector machine. I'll click on the bottom browse for the report. And again, I'll, I'll make this bigger so we can see how it did. And then in order to compare it to the decision tree model, again, the bottom browse will help me see that. And I come over here to look at misclassifications. And of course, again, the tree. In order to see the tree the best, you click those little diagonal arrows. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.